This episode is brought to you by ThePuzzler.com. In this video, we take a look at how to solve logarithmic equations using tricks and properties. If you don't know what the basics of logarithms are, watch our video titled Introduction to Logarithms. It goes over basic logarithms and their meaning. Here is the simplest type of log problem. Can you find the value of x in the following equation? Log base 3 of 27 is equal to x. Pause the video for more time. This is one of the basic logarithmic equation form. It serves as an important final step for many logarithm problems. Let's take a look at how to solve this type of log equation. Let's say log base k of m is equal to n. Well, just like how you can inverse addition using subtraction, we can take the anti-log to undo the logarithm on both the sides. To do this, we basically take the base to the power of both sides. This might sound confusing, but here is what will happen. We will get k to the power of log base k of m is equal to k to the power of n. Well here, the k and the log base k cancel out on the left side. And finally, we're left with m is equal to k to the power of n. A note here, k and m must be greater than 0 and additionally, k cannot equal 1. Let's now apply this to the problem that we have at hand. Our problem was log base 3 of 27 is equal to x. Well here, if we just apply what we learned, we can take the anti-log and using this new method that we just learned, we get 27 is equal to 3 to the power of x. We can rewrite 27 as 3 to the power of 3. So the exponents have to be equal and x is equal to 3. Here is the second type of logarithm problem. Log base 4 of 64 is equal to log base 4 of 2x. Pause the video for more time. This is the second type of logarithm problem. It is also very common and serves as an important stepping stone for removing logarithms out of the problem. When there is a log expression on both sides and the base is the same, we can take the anti-log on both sides, effectively removing both the logarithms and leaving us just with the arguments on both sides. Let's say we have log base b of m is equal to log base b of n. Well here, if we take the anti-log of both sides, the logs would cancel out and we would just be left with m is equal to n. Once again, b and m must be greater than 0 and b cannot equal 1. Let's now apply this to the problem that we have at hand. Our original problem was log base 4 of 64 is equal to log base 4 of 2x. While well, applying our property that we just learned, we can take the arguments and set them as equal. So we get 64 is equal to 2x, which is very easy to solve. And our final answer is x is equal to 32. Logarithmic properties. Now that we know the two basic types of equations, 
let's take a look at more complicated logarithmic equations and properties that will help us solve them. Before we move on, an important note about extraneous solutions. These are fake solutions that we get that don't satisfy the original equation. To find these, you just have to never forget to plug your answers back into the original equation to check for domain errors. We will see an example of this later on in the video. The first logarithmic property that we will look at is the product rule. The product property. It states that log base b of m times n is equal to log base b of m plus log base b of n. Here, once again, we have a domain restriction. b, m, and n are all greater than 0. And additionally, b is not allowed to equal to 1. Here's an example of the product property. Log base 2 of x plus 4 plus log base 2 of x is equal to 5. Can you find the value of x? Pause the video for more time. Let's apply the product property in this problem. Our original problem was log base 2 of x plus 4 plus log base 2 of x is equal to 5. Well, we can combine the first and the second term on the left side using the product property. Then, we would get log base 2 of x times x plus 4 is equal to 5. But wouldn't you notice it, but this is just like the first type of log problem. Using what we learned from there, we can rewrite this as x times x plus 4 is equal to 2 to the power of 5. We can simplify this to get x squared plus 4x is equal to 32. Subtracting 32 from both sides, we get x squared plus 4x minus 32 is equal to 0. Here, we can factor this expression because it's a quadratic. Now we have x plus 8 times x minus 4 is equal to 0. And using what we know about quadratics, x is either equal to negative 8 or 4. Do you think we are done? We are not. We actually have to check for extraneous solutions. Let's look at how. Let's plug in both negative 8 and 4 back into the original equation. First, plugging negative 8, we get log base 2 of negative 4 plus log base 2 of 8 is equal to 5. Wait, we already know that the first term is not valid because the argument of a logarithm always has to be positive. In conclusion, we know that negative 8 is not a valid answer. Now, let's move on to our second answer, 4. Plugging in 4, we get log base 2 of 8 plus log base 2 of 4 is equal to 5. Here, we can see that the value of both the bases and the arguments are valid. Thus, 4 is a valid answer. Our final answer for this problem is 4. The second type of logarithmic property that we will look at today is the quotient rule. 
the quotient property. It states that log base b of m divided by n is equal to log base b of m minus log base b of n. Once again, we have the same domain restrictions where b, m, and n have to be greater than 0. And once again, b is not allowed to be equal to the number 1. Here is an example of the quotient property. Simplify log base 3 of 162 minus log base 3 of 2. Pause the video for more time. We can't express 162 as an exponential number with base 3. It appears that we might be stuck. But we can actually apply the logarithmic properties in reverse. Let's apply the quotient property in reverse. We have log base 3 of 162 minus log base 3 of 2. Applying the quotient property, we get log base 3 of 162 divided by 2. 162 divided by 2 is equal to 81, so we have log base 3 of 81. We can rewrite 81 as 3 to the power of 4, so log base 3 of 81 is equal to 4. The multiplication and quotient property are very similar. And in reality, the quotient property can be proved from the multiplication property. Let us now look at our third logarithmic property, the power rule. The power property. It states that log base b of m to the power of k is equal to k times log base b of m. Again, we have the same domain restrictions as earlier, where b and m have to be greater than 0, and b cannot equal 1. Notice that k can be any real value. Here is an example of the power property. Simplify log base x of x to the power of 5. Pause the video if you would like more time. Let's apply the power rule to simplify this expression. We can write log base x of x to the power of 5 as being equal to 5 times log base x of x and log base x of x is just equal to 1. So our answer is 5 times 1 or 5. We have learned the three main logarithm rules. Here are a lot of the logarithm rules at a glance. Keep in mind that a lot of these rules are derived from the three properties that we just learned. Rule 1, 2, and 3 are the rules that we just covered. Rule number 4 states that log base b of 1 is equal to 0. Rule number 5 states that log base b of b is always equal to 1. Rule number 6 is a power rule in a simpler form like we just saw. And rule number 7 states b to the power of log base b of k is equal to k as we saw with the anti-log. Here in all these problems, b is greater than 0 but it does not equal 1, and m, n, and k are real numbers, but m and n must be positive. Now that we have learned all of the properties, let us apply some of them in a not so simple logarithm problem. Here is a tough logarithm problem. Simplify log base 5 of 500 minus 2 
log base 5 of 2 plus log base 4 of 32 plus log base 4 of 8. Pause the video for more time. We can simplify this problem in the following way. We can first write the second term and simplify it using the reverse of the power rule. And we would be left with minus log base 5 of 4 as our second term. Then the first two terms can be simplified using the quotient rule and the last two using the product rule. And we're left with log base 5 of 125 plus log base 4 of 256. Rewriting the first term and the second term as powers of their bases and then taking out the powers, we get 3 times log base 5 of 5 plus 4 times log base 4 of 4. The logs are all equal to 1 so we're left with 3 times 1 plus 4 times 1 and our answer is 3 plus 4 which is equal to 7. Why logarithms? You might be wondering if there are any real-life applications, and there are. Logarithms put numbers on a human-friendly scale and let us do math very quickly with very big numbers. Here's a summary of what we learned in this video. We learned about the two main type of logarithm problems, the product rule, the quotient rule, and the power rule. Here is a problem for you to try on your own. Log base 3 of x squared plus log base 3 of x cubed is equal to 15. Find x. Don't forget to write your answers in the comments below. Thank you for watching this video. If you liked or enjoyed this video, be sure to subscribe so you can get notifications for my future videos and be sure to hit that like button. See you in the next video.